I'm Dr. Diane Cleverly, Personal Healthcare Information. Welcome to this episode of How to Hack Healthcare, What Women Need to Know. Today we're going to be talking about things that women might be interested in. You know, as a woman, it's really hard to navigate the healthcare system these days, especially with thing, everything always changing. So even routine things, even if you don't have a major health issue, even routine things can be difficult. So I'm hoping that these slides in this presentation will help you as a woman to get some hacks and tips and ideas about how to navigate your healthcare issues. And very interestingly, are more likely to be underinsured and uninsured. They spend more money per year on health care and they see their primary care doctors more often. We also take more medications. So it's really important that we understand health care when we can vocalize our needs and advocate for ourselves during the health care visit. Healthcare policy for many countries tend to focus on women's issues, which is contraception, pregnancy, breast and ovarian cancer, and menopause. Today we'll be discussing contraceptive hacks. So in the U.S., the ACA has mandated certain changes in policy. So we now have no-cost birth control, women's well visits, breastfeeding stations, and no-cost mammograms for women over 40. In Europe, some countries have free birth control, some have no financial help at all, and others have a subsidy that pays a little bit of a portion of the cost. In Canada and Australia, birth control is available at a lower cost, so they do have subsidies there. One thing you need to know about birth control, and this should be a discussion that you have in more depth with your physician, is how well it works. So in the graph that I'm showing, uh, it's the failure rates. That's typical user rates. There's some differences in theoretical efficacy and, you know, actual use. But this is really what happens out in the field, is that if a woman is not using any birth control at all and she's sexually active, 8 out of 10 women will become pregnant within one year. If you look at the rates for the pill, and the pill is one of the most widely used contraceptions throughout the world with one major difference, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, the pill, it's 9%. That doesn't sound bad, but when you start thinking about it, that's one in 10 women on the pill per year gets pregnant. You're using the pill over a 20 year span, so you go on it very young in your 20s, and then you use it through your 40s. What's really interesting is that the failure rate for the pill declines over time, and people actually get better at using contraception the more they use it. There are other methods that are more reliable, and the IUDs and implants are very reliable. There are also other ways um, that you can make the pill more reliable. You can use condoms in combination with the pill, and that will, of course, increase the efficacy or the lower the failure rate. Here's the chart I was just alluding to. It's different regions like different methods of contraception. And something that you'll notice is kind of a takeaway point is that Asia is one of the highest for sterilization and for IUDs and implants. They are not as in love with the pill as Europe and America and some of the other countries. You should not just accept the pill as a default. You definitely need to speak with your physician about different options. So there's so many options out there to choose from now. There's no reason not to have that conversation and find out what is right for you. There's the IUDs with the hormones inside of the IUD, as opposed to the copper ones. They can actually be used in women who have heavy periods and need some control of that or suffering from anemia and, you know, need some control. Implants are also very effective. They do have weight gain as a side effect. So some people should absolutely stay away from them. But they can be easily reversed. Um, and the birth control ring is another one that is similar, but it has less hormone exposure. The birth control ring is not very widely accepted in the U.S. Um, it's much more accepted in Europe. So uh, condoms, again, they're low cost or free. They can be used in combination with any of these things, and they add the sexually transmitted disease protection. So that's always a good option. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of How to Hack Healthcare. And always remember, you deserve to be well-treated and if you like these webinars, you can um, check out some of the other How to Hack Healthcare 
webinars. And if you need more help, if you need personal help pursuing diagnosis and treatment, we can also do um, a workbook and a workshop for that. So you can register at that at uh, www.personalhealthinfo.weebly.com, which is my website. And any feedback at all or suggestions for topics is greatly appreciated. I have a number of topics I'm planning to cover, but it's always better to hear from you guys and find out what you're interested in learning about, hearing about what can help you, anything like that. If you subscribe, all the better because then you'll get all the latest updates. So thank you very much and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening. And for more information, please visit us on the web at personalhealthinfo.weebly.com.